we are live okay thank you narin so good afternoon folks uh, and uh, welcome welcome to our webinar with with hari damodaran uh, a renowned journalist award winning author um, and and someone whose book yeah, but, 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 yeah. idu correct pannirlam ipo session chandramogan sir if you could put put your self on mute sir uh, chandramogan sir can you hear me yeah i am able to hear you mute yeah, if you could if you could just put your self on mute sir thank you thank you very much yes i was i was just introducing harish so harish damodaran is the author of india's new capitalists uh, this is a, a book that he published in 2008 i read it upon my arrival in india it had a big influence on myself several of my colleagues it played a significant role in our deciding that we wanted to become entrepreneurs one day uh, let me introduce uh, harish more formally but before that harish can you hear me uh, welcome to our welcome to our webinar harish i can hear you sort of thanks for having me here thank you for the pleasure of having you so let me do a formal introduction harish before we we get into sure. the q and a um so harish is a senior visiting fellow at the center for policy research uh, i have known him and i think many of you on the call would have known him as a as a journalist uh, first for i think hindu business uh, for the hindu then uh, for for the indian express Current, currently harish is the national rural affairs and agriculture editor at the indian express and he writes uh, riveting articles in the express on this subject um uh, in addition to being a a, a a journalist of repute uh, harish has written uh, two excellent book india's new capitalist the one that we'll spend a lot of time discussing today this was published in 2008 and it won the ramnath goenka uh, 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 excellence award uh, uh, in journalism uh, this also won i think if i don't uh, if i'm not mistaken harish the, the new the, the india foundation the india foundation award also went to india's new capitalist well it was funded by the new india foundation new india right. foundation so the, was set up by nandan nilakarni so so this book was funded by uh, through a new india foundation right. yeah fabulous so 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 the great nandan nilakarni also has had a role to play in the creation of an incredible book india's new capitalist more recently arish has written a book which we will also discuss uh, uh, called broke to broke to break breakthrough the rise of india's largest private dairy company uh, and we have the privilege of having uh uh mr chandra mogan the man at the heart of that of that book uh, uh the man and the man who's built hatson um uh I'll, it's a usual format folks for those of you who have joined our calls before first half an hour harish and i will do a q and a around his work around his books i will also discuss his next uh, his upcoming book and and you can you can put in your questions in the q and a box in in zoom and the second 30 minutes of this call my colleague nandita will take your questions and pose them to pose them to harish so so harish thank you for being here privilege talking to you sir you've been a big source of inspiration for many uh, uh, younger capitalists uh, such as uh, such as myself uh, what what led you to write india's new capitalist right it's an incredible book for, for write for a book from 2008 it's far sighted it presages it presages it it's, it's it presciently anticipates the rise of the venture capital the 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 unicorn uh, generation it uh, it appreciately anticipates india's rise as a capitalist power how did you hit upon this subject how did india's new capitalists happen uh see first of all i was i, I was very much interested in the transition which was happening you know in in indian capitalism a, a, mm. as you would know you know and uh, business was traditionally you know it was a occupational silo in india's chaturvarna system you know the four uh, the four caste or, or the four order system you know and business was generally it was assigned to certain whatever so called vaishya castes and uh, plus it was not considered a very particularly honorable vocation you know? uh, it was almost something like a necessary evil you know like mm-hmm. uh, if you if you see kautilya's arthashastra it actually you know it derided merchants as thieves in effect if not in name you know, and prone to harassing the people okay nice. and uh, yeah and uh, generally you know obviously the brahmins were at the top you know then the kshatriyas you know even farmers had a you know had, had a much more honorable uh, place you know in society i mean if you look i mean the, there is that say, saying which says you know uttam kheti madhyam madhyam vyapar kanishth nokri that is uh, you know the most supreme is farming you know and mediocre is trade and the most lowly is service you know so i think i think generally you know uh, our tradition didn't uh, i mean sort of uh, relegated the merchants and traders to 
you know not not something you know uh, the most honorable of uh, of uh, mm -hmm. of, of uh, professions you know they were not to be generally not to be trusted you know and their activities were viewed as being at odds with the interests of common people you know and hence mm. subject to regulation by the heavy hand of an all knowing state you know and uh, and probably that perception was strengthened during the initial decades after independence you know when the government took over the commanding heights of the economy you know and uh, private trade was kind of you know brought under the license control raj you know mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. i think everything changed with the 1991 you know economic reforms you know i mean if you look at it i mean of course uh, in a formal sense what it did was you know it opened up industries which were you know hitherto reserved for the public sector you know and uh, it also dispensed with licensing and other restrictions you know like uh, earlier you had to obtain government approvals for starting and even expanding your factories you know whether it was to import capital equipment uh, entering into foreign collaborations or raising mm -hmm. monies from the capital markets you know everything you know whereas uh, i think the economic reforms were a landmark in this in that sense also you know it brought in a new language welcoming of private initiative you know so right. i think that was that was the, uh, the the change you know where where i think uh, the businessman was you know uh, seen the business was seen as a as an honorable you know in fact in, in fact uh, it was something which was uh, which which which, which, uh, which was which was sort of welcome you know whereas which which probably happened you know for the first time you know whereas uh, i would say that was not the case earlier you know when when generally i think uh, uh, businessmen and the traders were looked as you know people who generally but but you needed them somehow you know as, as you couldn't do without them you know yeah, so yeah. i so so and i think that was a period when you had uh, you know uh, 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 people from all kinds of communities starting to enter you know uh, 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 becoming businessmen you know so earlier as i said you know it was confined to certain vaishya communities you know and uh, and 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 i would say that the vaishyas were of two types you know the first was the real big you know uh, you, you can call them as the whatever uh, the mainstream uh, 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 vaishya caste you know that is uh, those people whose operations extended over widely dispersed territories you know beyond just their home base you know for example marwadis you know they they were originally from shekhavati and the marwad region of rajasthan but we know how they spread out you know to entire you know calcutta you know uh, bangladesh you know even assam northeast and even central india you know if you look at you know whether vidarbha maharashtra and you know uh, and and almost up to you know hyderabad and chennai you know and similarly you had the parsis you had the you had the various the, the, the gujarati baniyas okay the jains you had the sindhis and and you had of course the natukote chetiyar and some of these were actually not just confined to india they were even spread out beyond like if you look at the natukote chetiyar for example they were there yeah. in ceylon they were in burma they were in the you know the what you call uh, at that time it was called the state settlement you know basically singapore uh, singapore and malaysia i think malacca and penang at that time and indo china you know so vietnam laos cambodia and uh, same was the case say for example for the uh, for example the memons you know the memons for example you had uh, you, uh, they controlled the entire rice trade of eastern india you know from odisha to bengal up to the up to you know burma you know and uh, by the end of the 19th century their diasporic networks you know it it mm -hmm. extended even to you know the ports of the red sea and persian gulf east and south africa ceylon china and the far east you know so i would say that you had two kinds of business uh, communities the first was you know all the, the these great communities you can call them you know i mean who who's uh, who were not confined to one region then you had many of these regional uh, uh, business communities like like for example the nadars you had the syrian christians in kerala you you had the komti chettis in 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 andhra Uh, you had you had to some extent even the khatris and arodas you know who were mostly mm, confined mm, to 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 punjab you know you had yeah. the vaishya wanis you know who were basically in 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 maharashtra you know so 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 you had these two kinds of uh, 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 business communities i'll say you know whereas what we have seen in the last you know two decades three decades maybe more you know that the what the process start is now i think business is now you know it, it has gone beyond the baniya you know 
it it has, it has many uh, from, from many communities including farming communities you know like like for mm. example the kammas the gounders the reddies the naidus you know so uh, even uh, even for that matter the, the patidars right i mean so somebody like say a karsan bai patel right or or even or, or even this tulsi tanti of uh, of suzlon I, i know the company is in trouble but but all these were, uh, were, 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 were basically they were they were all from the farming communities you know so i would say that has been the big change which has happened in the you know post independence and probably got accelerated in the in the 19 uh, post the reform you know when 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 everything was kind of uh, opened up you know and and i think and i think that sort of uh, unleashed the animal spirits of entrepreneurs and, and it, i think for me that was a big eye opener the fact that till till i read india's new capital it's my picture of indian capitalism was that, that it's gujaratis marwadis chetiars right and select castes within that and i think what harish you did incredibly well was tell the rest of the country that that there are uh, com- com- communities with agricultural backgrounds with scribal class scribal backgrounds brahmins khatris kayastas the bengali bhadro lok um, uh, ezavas nadars uh, and that opening of indian capitalism i think you you your book signal to the rest of us that that capitalism was something that the rest of us could aspire to now you make a very interesting point in in india's new capital capitalist you said that you say that southern indian capitalism is more inclusive right than the northern indian capitalism and and you you give various sector case studies of the same sector in the north dominated by sebaniyas and marwadis whereas in the south a variety of different castes participating in that sector why does this happen why is southern indian capitalism more inclusive than northern indian capitalism uh i would say there are two reasons you know one i think education you know uh, uh, generally businessmen are recruited from the middle class okay uh, in south india i think the middle class is much more uh, uh, you can say the the social base of the middle class is much mm. wider okay and and this started much earlier you know probably in the in, in, even in the early 20th century you know you had uh, you had affirmative action you had reservations you had these kind of uh, things so i would say that spread of education was a very big factor you know whereas mm. uh, in in north india i won't say that the spread of education has been you you see the change happening maybe in the last two decades you know but otherwise if you see uh, 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 education was not that widespread in the north you know and 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 when i say education i mean english and the technical uh, and technical education yeah. you know yeah. so yeah. i yeah. i think i think i think uh, uh, ultimately i think in 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 the south you know you had the spread of uh, education so therefore i think the people were exposed to maybe even globalization basically something beyond your village you know you you you, you are able to uh, uh, you, you you are able to think beyond your village or your district you know whereas if you see i think uh, people in north tend to be much more insular you know especially in the among say the farming communities etc whereas uh, so so i would say number one is definitely i think education was a, was a very big factor uh the second thing which i think was very important is uh, the entry barriers were much less in the south okay when i say mm-hmm. entry barriers what i'm saying is you have a dominant mercantile community okay like in north if you see the baniya you know the baniya mm-hmm. is there at every stage you know right from the uh, right from the provision store owner to the to the wholesaler you know to the financier mm-hmm. so at every mm. level the the baniyas are very strong you know so it's very difficult for any new community to enter the 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 the, the kind of uh, any kind of business you know so so uh, and 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 especially like for example uh, if it's whether it is a cotton trade whether it is uh, say sugar whether it is uh, whether it is any agri commodity so i think in south you had a general you had what i call as a vaishya vacuum you know you didn't have any big community dominating any business you know though though though, though for example the the, the natuko tech city as was very big but they were probably not very big in in india you know they were more uh, they were more present abroad you know like like for example a lot of natuko tech city our capital was invested in in burma you know in 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 money lending there you know and and right. they owned a lot of land you know so i think in 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 south india i think uh, once the opportunities started uh, uh, 
uh, for, for, for business, you know, whether, whether it is to do with uh, even with, say, contracting, right? I mean, like in the 50s, 60s, you had big, uh, 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 the, the big investments in, in say, dams, like, like you had the Nagarjuna Sagar uh, uh, project. So, so it just happened to be that uh, anybody could get it, you know, anybody who had the money and the resources, they could mm. get it. You know, so I would say that the South, that South generally has been a more open field. So both, I would say both, uh, you know, education plus uh, the fact that uh, you didn't have the dominance of any one particular community. Even if you look at, even if you look at uh, uh, the traditional Indian capitalists itself, if you see, uh, they entered basically businesses where the British were not there, right? I mean, the first. Uh, the first major industrial ventures in India were, were cotton textiles, right? The British were not there. The British controlled uh, your collieries. They controlled entire jute. They they mm -hmm. they controlled tea, right? I mean, so you never had Marwadis in those areas, right? So so you see, even those communities entering into industries where where there is no dominant presence of the British at that time. The, the British agency houses were a very big uh, entry barrier during that period. Right, but where they were not there, these guys were there. You know, th th these guys got it. So, when, so as and when opportunities presented itself, they were able to sort of enter it. So, I would say the same is the case with the in, with the South. You know, so once uh, once uh, this the uh, uh, opportunities began opening up, anybody mm -hmm. could uh, so could uh, get in, and which is why you cannot associate in the South uh, business with any one particular community. You Not know, today. Yep. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. So, so, so for people like us, right, who read India's New Capitalists and 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 awaited your second book, you kept us waiting for a few years. Sure. I think we waited for a decade, and thankfully, uh, I think last year you wrote your second book, which has also become an award winner, uh, "Broke to Breakthrough: The Rise of India's Largest Private Dairy Company." I think that's one. I think the Gaza Capital Award, amongst others. How did how did uh, Chandra Mogan sir and, and you meet? How did you? How did you end up uh, writing uh, Chandramogan sir's biography? Could you just take us to that? And then I think hopefully we will have Chandramogan sir on the call itself to give us his thoughts on the book. Uh, first, you, Harish. Well, uh, as you know, my day job is as an agriculture reporter. I'm, I, I, yes. I, pay my, I pay my bills basically, you know, through reporting, you know, in a newspaper. Right. You know? Yeah, this is okay. This is a serious pastime. I mean, you know, writing books, you know, business history. It's, it's a nice uh, thing. So, so, so number one, you know, uh, uh, Mr. Chandramogan's business had to do with the dairy, and I write on yes. it. So I happen to know him for a long time. I, I think from around 2007 or something, you know. But but yeah. I, I, I yeah. But but uh, I had never thought of you know uh, writing, uh, documenting his company or something like that. But so number one is I think uh, basically I was interested in writing on 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 uh, since my my job is as an as an agriculture uh, uh, reporter and it was a nice thing to document india's first uh, biggest uh, private sector dairy company you know and we know that the dairy is an industry that has been dominated by uh, by, uh, by 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 corporates okay whereas uh, here was a very rare instance of a private uh, 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 player entering in mm. and other things. So that was one one of the reasons. The second is, of course, after I had written New India Capitalists, you know, I I was always interested in writing more of uh, business histories, you know, basically looking at case studies, you know, and uh, in, in my book itself, I had some case studies, but I wanted to write some more, you know, in-depth case studies, you know, and especially the rise of uh, regional entrepreneurs, you know, and from, you know, non-mainstream business communities, you know, so, uh, uh, so, 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 so that was my second interest, you know, so, so anyway, they had to be a book after India's new capitalists, you know, so, so, yeah. And the third reason, I think, uh, I, 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 what I like about uh, this company is uh, Mr. Tanamon's company has traversed through all phases of a business. You know, the, the, if you look mm -hmm. at a, if you look at consider a firm like an animal, like an organism. You know, so uh, he has traversed through all stages. You know, tiny and then small and then medium and then big and then now large. You know. So, so yes. I think I think you know just just writing a case study of any you know company you know in India I think I think that will be very interesting you know because uh, according to me you know firm firm histories are not just uh, history of the individuals behind it you know it's not only mm -hmm. it's not only uh, it's not only they but also the times in which they live you know 
so uh, so so i would say that uh, hudson agro is one company which has passed through all these uh, stages and and also it's one of the success stories of liberalization you know if if dairying had not been delicensed you know uh, probably uh, probably hudson wouldn't have been as big as uh, it is today you know and uh, and 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 we know what uh, struggles which uh, mr chandramogan went uh, went through even like this thing like he wanted to expand his capacity you know he he wanted to procure more milk right but but, uh, but 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 that was controlled by the state government right i mean they said that no you cannot expand your capacity beyond uh, this thing so i think it, this also gives you an idea of what liberalization did and when actually liberalization came you know so so i as a, so so that was i think another purpose why 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 i like uh, documenting uh, his book maybe maybe you can hear from mr tanu morgan himself tanu yeah. uh, uh, morgan sir can you hear us are you are you on the line sir and uh, yes sir uh, saurabh so sir uh, uh, from nothing 50 years ago right you, uh, you, you started hatson i think 1972 if i'm not mistaken sir so from 0 70 70 so so in 50 years you built a 3 billion dollar market cap company uh, i've known you for uh, of those 50 years i've only known you for the last decade but it's a remarkable business does does broke to breakthrough capture the the trials and tribulations that you went through to create this uh, gigantic enterprise sir in fact as sarish said our journey from tiny small medium big and large different places we require different types of management and it's a continuous learning curve what was good for tiny was not good for small what was good for small it didn't go through for the next levels so every level we stumbled and we had some problem of transition mm-hmm. almost four times we were close to bankruptcy and all the four times are mostly due to the one to another transition where we were also learning and everything was comparatively going on a heavy risk taking and heavy risk taking management changes and all that and in fact once when we asked harish more than the individual we wanted to cover the institutional assaults what we have come through and he covered it more how a institution has been built more than the individual that is me so mm-hmm. meat of the book is probably how the transition took place from one stage to other we started with a capital of 13000 rupees today looking back 52 years back i think we were able to maintain a cagr of my personal earning to a tune of 36% for wow. the last 52 years wow. is it a good average i think that's pretty pretty respectable sir i think i'll take that if that happens to my clients or myself i'll be very happy Now, thank you thank you for that and folks i would strongly recommend read both books uh, india's new capitalists is a is a is a is a, is a pan india book and broke to break through as harish said is a specific case study of what chandramogan sir and hatson have built uh, i while you know whilst i also like reading books on apple and and, and you know uh, uh, tesla and so on uh, I, i live in india we live in india and if we read about how uh people like chandramogan sir have built giant businesses out of nothing i think the learnings are more relevant for our lives in india it's all very well to understand what's happening in california but i'm afraid uh, you know i i live in mumbai uh, those of you live in bangalore and chennai uh, if you want to make your billions in india it will help to read read books of this sort thank you chandramogan sir harish back to you what's your next book and i hope you're not going to keep us waiting for another 10 years for your next book harish what's your next book on sir uh well i am right now working on a book which is a business biography of uh, someone who happened to head india's third largest industrial house uh, at the time of independence uh, mm-hmm. mr ramakrishna dal mr ramakrishna dalmia okay uh, yeah. so yeah yeah so so uh, so so he was a old capitalist okay uh, he was not a new capitalist he was an old capitalist he was a marwadi okay and uh, uh what i'm writing is based largely on his diaries you know? the, the 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 diaries that uh, he 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 wrote on uh, uh, thing so uh, which which actually offer a lot of insights into his life again as i said it's not just life it's also the times okay 
and i would say ramkrishna dalmia was india's first uh, uh, ambani and adani okay i'll say that mm-hmm. because uh, because uh, he set up his first sugar mill in 1933 when he was already 40 years old wow. okay okay and uh, by 1947 he was india's third largest industry okay and uh, and some of his uh, and and if you see some of his uh, his his uh, ventures they were remarkable for that time you know like like for example uh, uh, the the place which was called dalmia nagar you know mm. it was in bihar it was it was it was in it, it was in it was in a place called dehri on son okay right. uh, yeah yeah it was almost like what we would today call as a special economic zone okay it was yeah. it was around something like 3800 acres you know it was it was a parallel jamshedpur but of course jamshedpur only had a steel plant here you had a sugar mill you had a cement plant you had a paper plant you had a chemical plant okay which was basically Amazing. making sulfuric acid uh, etc it had its own light uh, uh, light railways okay yeah. It, it yeah it, it had of course its own power plant and uh, and, uh, and and all these things so 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 he he built this uh, dalmia nagar okay and during that period he he took on acc okay at that time acc was a monopoly right it was it was it was basically owned by the british and the tatas yeah. at that time he yeah. set up five uh, cement plants okay the first was the first one was in dalmia nagar which was in bihar the second one was uh, the, 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 the 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 second one was uh, in it, it was 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 near trichy in 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 tamil nadu okay the third one was in dadri which is near delhi and two yeah. others were, one was in karachi and the other was was in a place called dando which was near lahore okay so he had five uh, 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 cement plants and he and, and he actually used coastal shipping you know which we are talking about today so he mm. would take basically so 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 basically he would uh, take a uh, 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 coal from bengal okay the bengal coal he would take it he would he would take it to all the plant because you know as, as you know for cement you need coal right i mean for, uh, for, for for the he would take it to all the plants and on on the return cargo he would mm. take cement you know he would take cement so so he employed uh, 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 postal shipping and uh, if you see the kind of companies which uh, i mean uh, he, 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 yes so so the first one was of course dalmia nagar the second one was uh, was a various cement plant and then in the 40s he went through a speculative phase you know he took over several companies you know including including bennett coleman you know the, your, your the times of india uh, the punjab national bank you know and then you had two very big textile mills uh, in in bombay at that time you know uh, it, 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 it was uh, dharamsi muraji mill and uh, mm-hmm. you know so so and and then he took over the three uh, 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 three jute mills from the from from andrew you you know so you see someone you know growing from nothing to so yeah. in about say 15 16 years he was india's number 3 so <coughs> so it was almost like an adani kind of a thing you know and Meteor, was, meteoric rise meteoric, meteoric rise, rise and and unlike mr tanramogan uh, he he was a conglomerate uh, capitalist okay right. mr tanramogan right. became i mean he, he he has remained in dairy blood right i mean he he went from ice cream to 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 uh, to, to liquid milk and to dairy okay whereas here he had cement he had sugar he had paper he had uh, He, he even had an airline you know indian national uh, 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 airways you know which was number 2 after the tata the, the, the after uh, air india you know so he had interest in newspapers in banks he he had he had uh, insurance companies so i would say that he was the cause of the nationalization of insurance industry in india okay and probably also nationalization of banks you know? so Amazing. so 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 hmm. someone like so he was probably among the people who gave business a bad name you know and 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 uh, if you look at uh, uh, i mean if you look at uh, feroz gandhi's famous speech you know in 1955 yeah. exposing him so i i would say that was it was the first uh, something like 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 a hidden work report you know so uh, uh, so so Very so yeah so so again my idea is to you know tell the story of indian business through mr dalmia you know so uh, uh, unfortunately he died in 1978 but uh, thankfully i think i have lot of material on uh, him and he funded both the hindu mahasabha and 
Muhammad Ali Jinnah. You know, he funded both of them. He also funded Subhash Chandra Bose. Okay, so so he had uh, so so uh, you get a lot of insights also into the politics of that uh, the, that uh, uh, the, that time. You know, so uh, I hope uh, you know maybe maybe one year from now it should be uh, I, 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 I should be at least uh, through with the manuscript. Yeah, looking forward to this, and and uh, uh, Harish, maybe one day you can write a political primer for the new Indian capitalist, right? That will be very useful. Uh, I think that's much required. A political primer for the new Indian capitalist. So I think at this juncture, we'll turn to my colleague Nandita. I think several of you have been putting questions in the Q and A box. Uh, those who haven't, please punch in your questions. Nandita will try to take as many as she can in the remaining half an hour of the of the webinar. Over to you, Nandita. Yeah. Thank you, Saurav, uh, and thank you, Mr. Uh, Damodaran, for that riveting uh, discussion. Uh, it, I mean, it's quite an honor to you know have uh, have you on this webinar and listen to you. So, before I jump to the questions, uh, I personally had one question for you. So, I mean, if you could just answer that for me. Uh, in your book, uh, India's New Capitalist, which I read, uh, there was uh, this one part where you actually say that uh, Maharashtra is very much like southern India when it comes to democratization of uh, the capitalists uh, which exist here and you know in general the way industry has moved in this part of the country. So uh, can you just uh, you know elaborate a little bit more on that and why do you think uh, uh, Maharashtra is more like South India than it is like the its northern counterparts? Uh I think in Maharashtra, what uh, what has been remarkable, if you ask me, in uh, like 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 for example, yeah, yeah, yeah. So so in Maharashtra, I think uh, the rise of the Marathas in business has been a very uh, has, has been a remarkable phenomenon. You know, because there were hardly any Maratha businessmen in pre-independence, and uh, we can say that it has been largely because of the cooperatives. You know. And and, uh, and 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 probably I think uh, I think there you know uh, definitely I think politics has been a major uh, 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 contributor there you know I, I think I think the Marathas took over the Congress in 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 Maharashtra I think around the 1940s maybe late 30s onwards you know actually both the both the Partidars in taking over uh, the Congress in the in the 30s uh, uh, in Gujarat. And the Marathas taking over the Congress uh, in, uh, in in Maharashtra in the 40s. I think these were two very big things, you know, which was happened, which was happening. And in the case of uh, uh, Maharashtra, I think the cooperatives were a very big vehicle for the for, for the for the upward mobility of the of the Marathas, you know. And there definitely government policy helped, you know. Like like for example, to set up a cooperative mill, typically what would happen is uh, the uh, two thirds of the of the capital cost. You know, it would it would be it would be funded through an IFCI loan, you know, uh, an, an IDBI or an IFCI loan, which was guaranteed by the state government, you know. And even the balance, you know, uh, uh, whatever the, the balance, forty percent or or thirty three percent, I forgot the the thing. That itself, the state government would 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 take up the equity, you know, and uh, and the farmers had to just uh, whatever uh, 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 redeem that the, 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 those shares that to at par, you know. So I would say that that was the first stage for the, the Marathas uh, to come up in business. And then now, if you see last 20 years, that is another very interesting which has happened. You know, the same people who promoted the cooperatives, okay, their sons and grandsons are promoting sugar mills which are in the private sector. Okay, so so initially it was all uh, you know cooperatives. So today I don't think cooperatives in in Maharashtra would be producing even 20 percent of. Uh, of, of, of the sugar uh, today in Maharashtra, it is all mostly it is all mostly private. Uh, 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 the, 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 the things uh, the, the, it is mostly the private sugar mills today, you know. And and if you see, like for example, you look at uh, Mr. Sh Mr. Rajit Pawar's family, right? I mean, if you if you look at the, all those companies, they are they 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 are actually much bigger today than any cooperative. So I would say that. Uh, Maharashtra has been a very unique uh, model of, you know, cooperative capitalism, you know. So in the first stage, you know, you build businesses through cooperatives, okay. Then then you become big and then, you know, many other, uh, in, in the second generation, you know, they all become, you know, a, a private uh, uh, entrepreneur. So that's what I think has been happening in, uh, in, in, uh, in, in Maharashtra. And in Gujarat, definitely, I think the Patidars had a very big uh, 
role. I mean, I, I think initially they 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 took over the Congress, and then I think today Patidars are, are equally, you know, a, a very big uh, uh, supporters of of the BJP also. So definitely, I think the politics has played a part there, you know. And uh, and again, I think education education has made a lot of difference, you know. And 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 which is why you see, you know, where where Patidars. The, the Marathas, whereas you look at uh, Yadavs, Gujars, you know, all the farming communities in the north, you know, they, they have not been able to uh, get into business, you know, even if they want to. So uh, I, I think definitely, I think uh, education has made a difference. Yeah. It's quite remarkable. I mean, that it, it sort of hit me in my face when I was reading the book. So uh, it was quite an interesting insight. Uh, so we have uh, Mr. Bridesh Kumar, who's asking uh, that uh, your comments on Muslim business class in Hindi heartland, especially uh, the entire leather and footwear uh, group mechanics and butcher trade appears to be monopolized by them. And uh, similarly, the hospitality sector in Gujarat or Maharashtra is uh, also the same. Uh, it's just quite similar to the local banyas who control, uh, you know, wholesalers from wholesalers to retail and become a monopoly. So, uh, I mean, what's the rationale there where you're saying, you know, uh, like uh, the monopolization has not happened, but, you know, uh, it's happened in particular sectors. So just wanted to understand, you know, what's the uh, idea behind this? No, no. If he's talking about monopolization of Muslims in which business, he's saying, uh, which is it? Uh, leather and footwear. Uh, butcher uh, I'll, I'll just uh, I'll just clarify the question. I think uh, it's yeah. a very interesting question, Harish. So yeah. I think that uh, we, what we have also noticed as investors is mm -hmm. certain uh, communities yeah. uh, tend to ha end up having a certain uh, uh, inclination for for uh, specific trades. Now, for obvious reasons, uh, for obvious reasons, anything to do with leather and footwear. Uh, uh, the Muslim communities tend to have a hammer lock on it. You could argue the Baniya or the Marwadi simply won't, won't go near it. So therefore, the Muslims end up dominating it. But what's more intriguing is, say, sectors like uh, hot hotels and hospitality. Right? Hotels and right. hospitality primarily tend to be Parsi or Muslim dominated. And again, right. you know, we, we, uh, we've also pondered why that is. Why is it that certain communities end up having less obvious dominance? Uh, leather, and, leather and footwear being dominated by Muslims, there's a logical con uh, reason. Po similarly, uh, uh, meat and meat and anything to do with uh, 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 non-vegetarian stuff, there's a natural reason why Baniyas and Marwaris will stay away. But mm. something like, say, hospitality or even fruits, even fruits mm. there, there are, uh, there's a, a certain dominance of a community. Have you ever been able to think through why is it that certain communities end up completely dominating specific industries? Uh, see, like I can tell you my state. Okay, in in Kerala, okay, like like uh, like where I stay, okay, I would say that uh, say about twenty years ago, twenty five years ago, Muslims were hardly there, you know, who were who were into doing uh, business or something. But today, I would say that uh, maybe fifty percent of the provision stores, you know, hotels, you know, uh, and a uh, lot of these businesses are now being uh, uh, are, are are being run actually by Muslims, you know. And, uh, and and I would say like in Kerala, definitely, I would say that they are the rising business class, you know, in, in Kerala. And uh, probably the, that's why you're also seeing some rivalry now happening, you know, between Muslims and even Syrian Christians, right? I mean, uh, so, 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 yeah, yeah. So, so, so there are, there's a very large section of Syrian Christians who are now even tilting towards the BJP, right? So, 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 which I would say has mainly to do with the, uh, you know, uh, because because this is an upstart business community with this uh, with this with this with this coming up. You know, so uh, my feeling is uh, probably you're seeing the same thing maybe in in Bombay and and everything. I I, I feel that you know uh, uh, any community which feels that uh, uh, which 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 uh, 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 tends to be uh, uh, tends to feel whatever not subjugated or whatever when they feel that the thing. They turn to business in a big way, yeah. you know, and and, yeah. and 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 it has been seen, for example, in the Nadas, right? Uh, at one point of time, at, at one point of time, you know, they were they were sort of persecuted. Okay, so they then went into this. We have seen it with the Jews, for example, right? Mm -hmm. So I would say I I would imagine that even among Muslims today, there would be some kind of a purposive uh, community organization, you know, to kind of you know sort of help each other out. You know, and then become uh, some kind successful. of a thing. Yeah, become successful. So probably, you know, uh, 
maybe maybe that some kind of a thing has been happening i haven't frankly i haven't studied the hospitality industry in in uh, in in in, uh, in 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 bombay but 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 i do know that uh, uh, hotels is definitely one kind of a business where they would naturally get in you know and uh, and, and and for example i uh, like like i i tell you uh, 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 even for example within farming okay a lot of a, 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 lo- a lot of vegetable farming is done by muslims okay? Mm-hmm. If, you, if you if you if you go to if you go to places like bareilly rampur or for that matter even in assam right i mean uh, 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 so 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 when you do vegetable farming you know you also get into the vegetable trading uh, business so i think basically it has to do definitely with with community networks you know so community networks will 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 happen and probably i mean this is i mean you can call it some kind of a pariah model of uh, capitalism you know where where uh, communities you know which feel that uh, that the, the, that they are under assault you go into business you you try and uh, you know and and you build uh, community community solidarities uh, uh, around that maybe maybe something of this kind is happening there yeah i think it's it's an interesting point i mean i would say the the, the rise of the marwadi community the rise of the baniya and now the the muslim entrepreneurs you are talking about in many cases business in india has been a a a a, a way to give voice to your social aspirations uh, whether it was the marwadis the baniyas and now the muslims and that's actually a fascinating topic i mean capitalism is not just a a, a way to make money it's also a way to earn respect and and that aspect uh, and, i think comes and, through and, and i also and, and i also suppose that uh, you know community links you know uh, probably the trust factor is very huge right i mean i can i can take uh, 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 i mean i won't cheat right if if you and i are from the same community you know you can't afford to cheat me right because uh, yeah. b- because i will i'll ensure that your daughter doesn't uh, doesn't get married right yeah. so reputation, so reputation yeah, is yeah, so, so so reputation uh, thing happens you know so so probably and, and nobody likes to you know go to the courts and uh, you know file a case and you know li- libel etc you know so it is easier to settle things you know within just like just like we say now that within the family you settle it so same thing you probably will will have you know community organizations you know they will they will ensure that uh, you know contracts are uh, th- there is no uh, violation of contracts and contracts are settled you know those kind of things so probably that could also be another factor you know so uh, so if i am setting up an a, a business i will tend to you know give jobs to my my uh, my my clansmen you know and then probably i will give even the subcontracts to my clansmen so if you see for example even if you see among say the marwadis you know uh, there was this great firm called parachand kanchamdas okay mm-hmm. which uh, which which was a huge marwadi firm maybe in the uh, maybe in the late uh, uh, 19th century okay uh, if you see they had uh, offices uh, in branches across india they had branches i think in karachi in, in, in uh, of course in the opm belt you know in in indore mansoor uh, uh, ratlam uh, ujjain etc then also calcutta you know and 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 hyderabad okay so so uh, gd birla's uh, grandfather you know he was a clerk actually in in mm. in the in, in the hyderabad branch of uh, of of uh, tarachand uh, ganchamdas okay and uh, lakshmi nivas mithil his grandfather mm. worked for uh, uh, he actually worked for uh, this tarachand ganchamdas okay similarly there was another firm called abirchand uh, I, i i forgot the name okay and you had many people you know the the, the singhanias uh, came from that line okay and uh, 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 so 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 i i think uh, there is nothing new about uh, community networks you know so whether it is the parties whether it is so i think in the first stage of any business you tend mm. to get support from your community members you know it it it, it tends to have and 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 of course you know at the at the later stage then then you become big you know and then then you don't need the community networks you know rather you become a role model for the for the for the community members right you know like like i say hey i want to be like 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 if, if there is uh, somebody i want to be like him you know so that kind of a uh, uh, thing happens you know so i think community mm-hmm. networks so i won't be surprised if uh, if if this is happening among uh, muslims also and, and it's a good thing right yeah absolutely for, for so those of who are on this call who are our clients this actually becomes a very powerful form of competitive advantage uh, so whether it is a, for the baniya community the marwadi community or the muslim community 
community oriented competitive advantages are some of the most powerful competitive advantages we are seeing in in contemporary india uh, 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 nandita back to you i think salil salil desai and uh, shanlav shade both have a uh, have a interrelated question and, and i think it's a very interesting question yeah uh, so um, so basically salil is asking that uh, the tech age capitalists in india seem to come largely from the banya community uh, so one very commonly sees agarwal pansal and goel as the leading founders so it wouldn't seem that you know much has changed uh, as far as the profile of the capitalists is concerned even though up, uh, a lot of changes have happened since you know especially after 1991 as you rightly mentioned uh, so i mean would love to hear your thoughts about this like uh, this whole it space even though it seems that it's uh, democratized we often see people from the traditional banya communities coming in so uh, what are your views on that mr dabodar uh i think one big one very interesting which is this thing has happened you know in the i would say last 25 years uh, we see uh, 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 see uh, the spread of education you know among among even banias you know you you see like for example you look at the uh, iits etc and even ias and all a lot of i, I think i am seeing a lot of marwadis and 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 uh, agarwals etc getting now into the professions you know which was which was very rare earlier you know uh, uh, so so i think both things are happening you know uh, just like uh, what are brahmins are getting into business i think many uh, many banias are now coming into the professions uh, so so the, just like for example you know a farmer doesn't want uh, his son to do farming i think there are many young people yeah, 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 uh, young people of uh, of say artiyas or traders who don't want to sit in the shop okay so i think that is something which is very interestingly which is happening now so if you look at all the all, all the all the many of the many of the e-commerce big businesses which have come up in the last say 10 years many of them actually are of agarwals you know you look at oyo uh, you look at ola right uh, even flipkart right flipkart was also uh, very much uh, of uh, this thing so uh, uh, i think the new businesses are mostly i would say of of uh, of of banias itself and now banias are also now getting into politics in a big way you look at uh, arvind kedriwal right i mean uh, uh, so uh, uh, i think there's a lot of churn happening you know which which we never at least i never thought i mean we could never have thought that there would be a politician like uh, like arvind kedriwal maybe you know 20 25 years especially after post mandal okay so uh, in, and, in a way perhaps rich perhaps yeah. the banya is saying that since the internet the banya yeah. is saying that since the internet is going to disrupt my my distribution business or the kirana store so therefore i take it i take it over yeah <laughs> absolutely absolutely so in a way it's it's, it's only now, now that you put it like this it may, it may feel so logical why the the banias are are the the preeminent uh, tech entrepreneurs in in, in india Um, in fact, and another thing is go for what in fact we would go on to say that you know education has sort of uh, acted as a level playing field uh, so whilst uh, earlier it was only the scribal castes who were you know sort of uh, the had the uh, the entire hold over education uh, in the previous era it's because of the democratization of education in general and because of its widespread uh, it's become a level playing field so people who are already in the trade business who had the smarts and now have the education are you know doing all that they can do and uh, people who are driven and are also educated are also coming in so it it's become more of a you know competitive sort of space where you know i have the smarts i have uh, my educational background and i have the will power and the drive to do something big and therefore i am doing it so that is more of a theme that you know uh, that uh, i can understand from this whole conversation that uh, we had in the past one hour i think uh, another there's a lovely question from anil narayanan i think uh, you might want to look at that yeah so uh, mr anil narayanan has a question uh, with uh, regarding the agricultural industry so he's asking how do you see the agriculture industry evolving uh and would we see a consolidation of larger companies like we see in other parts of the world so uh would you see the small holding the fragmented uh holdings of agriculture that have uh, persistently been seen in india uh sort of erode away into uh becoming you know big conglo uh, big sort of uh, consolidated farms or you know big uh, sort of companies uh which get formed and you know sort of uh, consolidate the whole agricultural sector uh 
i don't think uh, agriculture production is going to be taken over by by big corporates and you know uh, kind of a thing I, uh, I i i don't think they can get into this business of uh, you know actually growing crops and uh, and uh, kind of a thing so you may have uh, more consolidation happening as far as sourcing of produce etc will will happen or or maybe you know even supply of inputs and and those kind of uh, things but definitely i don't see it it doesn't make sense you know it it uh, it doesn't make sense for any corporate to start farming wheat or grapes or uh, or or sugarcane and uh, this kind of a thing uh, i i don't think that's going to uh, happen at all you know but but uh, yes they will be i, I mean uh, uh, there will be consolidation happening through i i, I think i think probably uh, see today india has something like on paper something like i think 11 crore farmers you know but i seriously believe i don't think uh, there are more than 4 crore farmers who are serious farmers okay uh, and 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 what you see more and more if you whether you go to a telangana or an andhra or uh, or a punjab or a, or a haryana is uh, the owners are no longer cultivating okay a lot of a lot of land is uh, so so a lot of consolidation is happening through leasing okay so so i may be owning just 5 acres but actually i'll be farming 20 acres okay wow. and and yeah yeah and 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 that is definitely happening uh, uh, according to me at least last 20 25 years this has been happening so so i i would uh, I, i i think agriculture just like any other field it will become specialized you know i mean the, the simple adam smith uh, whatever you know uh, 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 specialization division of labor you know everybody won't uh, want to farm you know so i think it will be like that but uh, there's no way big corporates are going to you know uh, own say 10000 cows you know uh, uh, 25000 acres and and where they cultivate uh, it doesn't make sense you know it, it it's not uh, it's not going to be viable you know but you are going to have more and more of uh, definitely you know disruptive technologies are going to come in you know in fact uh, why i am a little disappointed in the last 10 years is i haven't seen any uh, any of these new uh, new economy players coming in agriculture you know whereas mm. if you look at uh, 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 i don't think there has been a disruptor of the kind of say a mahico a jain irrigation a haxen agro you know we haven't had this kind of uh, disruptor in the field of agriculture i think what we have seen most of these businesses it's all mostly retail right i mean uh, mm-hmm. uh, it, it's been more uh, it's it's been a very narrow actually if you look at it uh, that way i mean uh, i'm not uh, I, i mean if we write the history of this period i will say that uh, the the new entrepreneurs are in a very narrow kind of a sector you know it, 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 in narrow range of industries whereas i would say that in the first two decades after uh, after the liberalization you had uh, in the you, you had people getting into all kinds of industries right i mean including old economy uh, uh, things like sugar you know textile you know uh, dairy itself you can call at one level it is an uh, uh, old economy kind of a thing whereas uh, now we are having more uh, i think people in whatever mostly retail isn't it i mean I, you you'll have a better uh, idea i'm sure nice to good so arish can can we just take that and extend it to one last question where do you see indian capitalism going do you do you think we will carry on having wave of the wave of wave after wave of entrepreneurial activity or will we end up you know becoming a japan or a korea where you know handful of conglomerates basically dominate all economic activity and and effectively run corporate life uh see uh, if you look at uh, the history of uh, capitalism you know uh, 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 see uh, entrepreneurs have tended to come in areas you know where where new areas and then they grab kind of opportunities so you had a kind of a pre market capitalism i would say in india during the 1930s and the 40s you know so all people like the dalmias the birlas the bangurs etc were a product of that era right and that is a period when you know the british the called the, the the british agency houses had figured out look yeah there is no point being here they were slowly sort of packing uh, they were uh, they, they were slowly thinking of exiting so so that's how you know uh, 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 mr ramkrishna dalmia took over a lot of andrew yule mills he took yeah, over yeah. Uh, bennet coleman he took over kevinter dairy right uh, so 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 that was a period when many of these guys were packing up 
and then you had these uh, industries. In fact, 1930s and 40s are very interesting because these preceded the license Raj, you know, and 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 the Birlas and the Bamboos and the Dalmias and the Martin Burns and everybody. They didn't come with. I mean, it was they were not they were not beneficiaries of any license Raj. So I would right. say so that was so that was basically two decades of you know uh, a real kind of uh, entrepreneurial revolution. Yeah. So I would say the same applies to maybe from the mid 80s to you know the first two decades after liberalization. I think we had a real wave of entrepreneurship. You know, whereas I would say that uh, after that there's been a lot of destruction. If you see the number of companies which have Gone under, you know, including yeah. some very fabled names. You know, I mean, if you 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 look at, uh, for example, the Tappers, you know, you look at uh, the the the, the Ruiyas, you look at even even people like say an Alok Industries, right, and uh, yeah. a, a Z Telefilm. I mean, and you look at you look at these these guys were the success stories of that time, right? I mean, the, uh, early 1990s, right? Naresh Goel, right? I mean, uh, Jet Airways, right? I mean. Uh, 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 then, then same thing, pantaloons, right? I mean, Kishor uh, uh, Biani, right? I mean, he was he was supposed to be India's Sam Walton, mm -hmm. right? So, if you see, there's been a lot of. Uh, I, uh, I would say that last ten years has been a very difficult phase, actually, if you look for Indian capitalism, you know, where a lot of a uh, lot of businesses have been, you know, uh, uh, have been wiped out, you know, and mm -hmm. there has been a consolidation. And at the same time, there is also the rise of these new entrepreneurs in in these areas which we are talking about, you know, e retail, etc. And uh, I don't know to what extent has that been because because you had cheap capital, you know, your your U.S. interest rates were very low. You had uh, the thing. I'm told that this year only there's been only one unicorn, right? This year, in mm -hmm. in, in in this calendar year, there has been only yeah. one unicorn. Yeah. yeah. So I think I think the last ten years has been actually a very difficult phase. Uh, uh, because of you know uh, yeah so i would say that probably maybe we are entering we are going to enter a new phase of capitalism you know that the next wave could come because of you know the collapse of china right not not collapse mm -hmm. of china mm -hmm. rather a, a yeah, decoupling yeah. and a decoupling and de-risking of china you know and uh, yeah. probably i think i think uh, the world wants india to succeed right i mean because uh, nobody can absorb the kind of capital right i mean uh, uh, we know that the world uh, has a lot of capital, you know. They want to invest it somewhere, and nobody. If, if China cannot, uh, uh, if if China is not in a position, somebody else has to absorb it, right? It cannot be absorbed by, say, a Vietnam or a, or or a, or a, or, a, or an Indonesia or a Bangladesh or somebody. So it has to be obviously be logically it has to be in India. So probably in these ten years, you know, after all this, you know, pain which uh, which has happened, actually that's what has happened, you know. Uh, uh, so so with uh, so so you had. Uh, Many companies going under. At the same time, you had that problem of, uh, you know, you you had the twin balance sheet problem, right? But today, I think probably banks are in a much better position to lend. And at the same time, you have had this consolidation. I think which you have written a lot about, you know, uh, 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 more and more industries being controlled by fewer and fewer groups, right? I mean, so so you have some kind of a conglomerate uh, capitalism. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it would be very interesting. Yes, what what you are saying. I don't have an answer to whether 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 mm -hmm. India will India's next growth will be through whatever some kind of a Kirutsu kind of a model similar to whether it will be a, a, a South Korean and a, and and the Japanese kind of a thing, or will it be like 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 the exciting new ca uh, Indian capitalists which we had in the 90s? You know, all new players coming, you know, disrupting, you know, entering all industries. You know, so I think I think that that. That should be that should be the ideal uh, uh, thing to happen, rather than uh, you know maybe you know uh, maybe maybe ten groups, fifteen groups, you know, dominating the 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 the, the whole thing. But but definitely, there's no we we can assume that the next decade will be India's decade. Okay, but, so but thank you uh, very much, Harish. Thank you for that positive thought. I think I will yeah. bet on a million flowers blooming. I think you've, you've left us a very positive thought that. We go through these cycles of capitalism in India. We consolidate yes, yes. and then we fragment again. Yes, yes, yes. And given and you make a very interesting point, given that we've been through a brutal phase of consolidation over the last ten years or so, perhaps we fragment again. Uh, and and who 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 better to chronicle that journey than Harish Damodaran? We look forward to your book, Harish, and keep writing uh, outstanding books, keep changing uh, lives of of millions of entrepreneurs in our country. Thank you very much, Harish Chandramogarson. Chandramogarson, thank, thank you very much. And to all of you who have logged in, uh, Nandita, thank you for, for orchestrating the Q&A.
Thank you, folks. Bye for now. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks, sir. Okay. Bye for now.